I'd like to do today is, is start out with a series of rook endings that I think would be extremely useful for just about all levels. Um, I guess the recommended level then would be somewhere between 1,200 and 2,000. And uh, here we go. Okay, so this beginning position here, this is called the Lucina position, or the bridge position. Um, Lucina was a uh, famous endgame constructor and position constructor back in the day. And uh, so a lot of these rook endings are uh, named after him. But anyway, so what I'd like to do here is start out with, uh, with this position because once you learn this winning method, the idea of exactly how are we going to queen this pawn when our king is stuck in front of it. Um, once you learn this method, it can be repeated for every single pawn you see, anywhere from the, uh, from the knight pawn to the other knight pawn. Um, now, the rook pawns tend to have their own set of rules. Uh, just like in king of pawn endings and a lot of other end games, the rook pawns tend to be exceptions. Um, and we will have a, a video coming to you about the corner pawns and when those are winning and when they're not. Um, but for today, we're going to start out with this Lucina position, the bridge position. We're going to talk about exactly what method is needed in order to queen that pawn easily without any trouble. And uh, then we're going to move on to some more difficult positions moving backwards to forwards. Um, and again, I know I'm talking here before the moves, but I want to touch on that real quick for all you interested players out there. I think a very important point is that when you study endgames, to try to study it with that backwards to forwards method. And what I mean by that is that a lot of times young players have the illusion that grandmasters can calculate 50 moves ahead or 70 moves ahead or something. And, and on occasion, there are some great calculators, and I think on occasion, sometimes you have to do something like that and really try to calculate. But most of the time, their ability to, to solve a position that's in front of them at a high level is based on how well they know the next position. They, they have so much experience, and they've seen these ideas so many times. They've seen ideas that work in one position, work in another position. So once you really learn an idea and memorize an idea, you can apply that to a million different positions a lot of the times. And that's why um, when you're studying end games, I think if you, if you start with some basic position, and then move to the next most advanced, and then then move to the next most advanced, and so on and so forth, all of a sudden you find yourself looking at a position with a number of pieces on the board, um, what, what would seem very would have seemed very complicated to you maybe a month before that, but now you look at this position with a very clear idea of not only how you're going to win it, but, but exactly what the steps are going to be, because you've solved it in this backwards to forwards method. So coming back to what I'm saying here is that this Lucina position is a, very, is a very important position for that, and that once you learn how to win this position, it's going to be easier to both win and draw other rook end games. Okay, so I'll stop talking here. Okay, so the uh, first, uh, first move here, first idea, obviously you notice that this king can't really escape at this moment because the rook and the king are guarding these squares. So the most logical move would be to give check and uh, force this king to make a decision, and, and that is the first move. Uh, real quick to make a note, Always good to note that these lateral checks or side to side checks don't really make any progress in rook endings because you're not really forcing this king to leave the important squares. The same would be true if you wasted your time running over here and he made a waiting move. I just want to make a note there for anybody watching this video that bringing your rook to the side to side check is not going to improve your position. So we could come all the way back and eventually reach this situation here and come back to giving this, uh, this up and down check, the longitude check, if you will. So let's go back to our beginning position and start with that. Rookie two check. Now, this king is forced to move away from the pawn, which is part of the key, because if he moves in front of this file, the game is instantly winning. We move our king away from the queening square. This rook is now useless, because obviously he can't come over here and give checks immediately. If he tries to do that, we queen. Simply block with our rook, and we're easily winning. So, giving this check on e2 forces the king to move away from the pawn, because again, as I just said, if he moves here, he's blocking the entire open file, allowing you to queen immediately. Now, after he moves, um, this is where the idea comes into play, and you might want to take a moment here to try to solve some things. Always good to pause the video and maybe try to solve what would you do here to win if you don't know this position. Um, and, and see how would you make progress here. Um, whenever you try to solve something and treat it as an over-the-board situation, even if you get it wrong, you're, you're, you're really cementing that position once you do find out the answer to your little database in your brain. I think sometimes people sit there and allow themselves to be spoon-fed a little bit too much.
much, and that can um, that's why maybe they forget ideas. So again, throughout all these things, um, I may recommend moments where hey, you might want to pause the video, see what you would do here. Um, but okay, so let's continue. The winning idea here is to bring the rook up before we try to escape with the king. And let me show you why. If you try to escape with the king immediately, all you're going to be doing is walking into a series of checks that will eventually exploit to you that you can't leave the pawn. So you'll bring the king back, and it's always good to know that even when we mess up, it's not over. We can always come back. Um, but you see that bringing the king out behind the pawn did not really make any progress for you here. Um, you know, giving another check obviously isn't going to do anything. So what we might want to try to do here is rather than, rather than trying to stop the checks, like for example, let's say you went back to the F-file trying to prevent this, I would simply come back, not allowing you to come out. So the only thing left for you to do if you can't prevent the checks and there's no obvious way to win is to try, try to get ready to meet the checks, and that's where this idea comes into play. This is the Lucina idea, the bridge idea, if you will. What you've done by playing this move is, is put them in sort of a zugzwang. Um, any sort of waiting move here is going to allow this king to come out. And what you've done by bringing this rook up is you've prepared to meet this final check with a, with a blocking. You, 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 I guess the reason why they call it the bridge is because the king and rook seem to provide a bridge of protection here for the pawn. Um, I, I think that's why. I don't always know why they call it certain names. But... That's, that's, I think, why they call it the bridge here. Um, but this is Lucina's winning idea. L let's look at it again from the beginning one more time. We give a check on the open file, force the king to move away. We come up preparing to, obviously we know we can't stop the checks. We talked about why you can't come back to this file because he simply goes back. But what you are doing is you're preparing to meet the checks somewhere along the fourth rank. Now, um, we've seen that waiting simply loses because our king will eventually get out. And uh, now, by the way, if he didn't give this check, if he made a waiting move, you can simply come forward with the rook now that your king protects it and come over and once again prepare to provide this bridge of protection for the pawn. So he does, once, once, you, once you've figured out this idea of of bringing the rook to the fourth rank to prepare the bridge, there really isn't any way he can stop it, which is why this is so important to know, um, because this winning method, like I said, applies for every pawn besides the corner pawns. Um, so one last time I want to show something, and that is that if you do come up preparing to, to protect yourself with the bridge, what if he attacks your rook? Well, if his king leaves too far, um, now now he has another problem. Now he's now he's left his, his protection over these squares. So there are actually two ways to win this position, um, but the easiest is to come down to the seventh rank when he attacks your rook, now to activate, and although it's not quite the bridge with the king and rook blocking the g-pawn, it's still very effective because you prevent the checks and uh, there's nothing he can do but allow you to queen within the next move or two. Um, so, in review, the Lucina position wins with every pawn besides the corner pawns, if you, if you remember this method of bringing your rook up to the fourth rank, not stopping the checks, but preparing to meet the checks with your rook, you'll be able to win every single one of these rook endings with, with ease. And uh, again, remember that attacking with the king sort of temporarily uh, stops the bridge, uh, but it does run into another problem, which is that he's left these squares unprotected. Um, good to note is that if he attacks your rook, probably you shouldn't go for this move going to the uh, king and queen versus king and rook endgame for two reasons. One, um, winning a king and rook versus nothing is much easier than winning king and queen versus rook. I think um, this, this is not the topic of this lecture, but a lot of, you know, you'll find out that winning king and queen versus king and rook can be difficult sometimes. Um, and there are some positions that are very difficult depending on how well your opponent knows the defensive ideas. Um, and the other reason is that if you play king there, it's actually a blunder because now I have the ability to give check before I take your rook. Your king will go and hide. And now I go here with tempo. Now both your rook and your pawn are hanging, which means that you're going to be headed to a drawn position. Even if you went back, I could sacrifice and then take your rook. So just a, just a quick reminder that... Uh, you don't want to settle for less if he does attack your rook. You want to remember this idea of taking advantage of what he's left behind, which is pretty
pretty common theme in chess, right? There's no perfect system, but usually if your opponent stops one thing, he's giving up another thing. So, okay, very good. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on to another position. Once you've learned the, uh, the bridge position, knowing, knowing that that winning idea works with every pawn, a good thing to do is to uh, now learn maybe how to stop your opponent from reaching the bridge position. So let's start out with this position here, where now you're sort of looking at it from the black's point of view. And uh, what, what, you're, what you're seeing here is that, let, let's, say, let's say you gave a check. Um, if you're black, okay, it's, it, let, let's say white makes some waiting here just to prove the point. If, if black was to give a check here, allowing white to come forward, and now let's say that, you know, obviously he's getting checkmated, so he tries to run away, we force him out, all of a sudden we've achieved this position here. Now, if, if you didn't know about the Lucina position or the bridge position, you might look at this position as black and still think, hey, I've got pretty good drawing chances. But your knowledge of the Lucina position, the bridge position, should tell you that this is easily lost. Now that my king has moved in front of my pawn, I am shielded from checks by your rook. And it's only a matter of time before I push my pawn, bring my rook back down and behind, and anybody who uh, remembers the position we just did here can see that that's, that's easily a Lucina position, therefore an easy win for white. Um, that's partly why I'm trying to fit both of these endgames into one video so that you have a direct memory of, of, of uh, that last position, the Lucina position. So knowing, knowing, that, uh, knowing that your opponent needs the Lucina position or the bridge position to win, that kind of gives you, you know, more stress in this position, which is always good to have a little bit of stress so that you know this is an important position. Nothing more dangerous than thinking that you're fine and then all of a sudden you get checkmated. So, so okay, so now that you know about the Lucina, you know that you need to find some way to prevent him from getting that position. So, obviously giving check does not do that. He immediately shields his king, follows that by forcing your king out, and he reaches the Lucina position. So the question is, how do we stop him from making progress here? Uh, once again, if you if you don't know this endgame, this is a moment where I would recommend you to pause it for a moment and uh, try to figure this out for your own self. But now I'm going to show you. The most accurate way to draw these endgames, and this is a defense that works with every pawn, including the corner pawn, so that's kind of nice when we can learn an idea that applies to every pawn. Um, the most accurate idea that applies to every single pawn here is the Philidor defense which in this case, um, there are two different types of Philidor defense, but the active Philidor, if you want to call it that, is the, is the easiest to remember, and it's the one that works with every pawn. And here's what that is. The rook comes up to the sixth rank, or if you were in white's position and black had the pawn up to the third rank. But this is the key. By cutting the king off from making progress, you force him to push his pawn first. Now, he can try to wait you out, but in general, unless you make some sort of large blunder here, if he gave you check, you should be able to go back and forth. Um, so unless you made some sort of large blunder here, I don't see any reason why your rook shouldn't be able to wait along this range. Now, if you do that, eventually he'll either wait forever or he'll have to push his pawn. So let's say he goes ahead and does it. What, what, was, so, what was so nice about cutting him off on the sixth rank? Well, once he's done that, now, now we, we should notice something about this position. His king, for this moment, has nowhere really to hide. Now you might say, oh, well, let's give him check real quick, but, but he does have a place to hide from the lateral check, the side-to-side -side check. Again, I don't know why that is about rook endings, but it always seems that the side-to-side -side lateral check isn't quite as effective. So the, the side check doesn't really do much, um, but bringing the rook back down to where you started is, is kind of nice, because if you notice, for this for this moment, while, while his king is here, um, he really has nothing he can do to prevent you from giving checks. Now, once again, giving checks, you're not trying to win this thing. Don't go crazy and try to run your king away, you know, and then you're going to lose. So as long as you maintain yourself in front of the pawn, you have no problems. And for this moment, his king has nowhere to hide. So let's say he tries to pretend that he doesn't see the check coming, and I don't really know what else he can do anyway. We start giving these checks. The checks continue. And this is Philidor's idea was that once we cut him off on the sixth rank and forced his pawn to go forward, when we did come back to giving those checks, there was going to be no place for his king to hide. And if he runs too far, we actually, now, now we, we could continue to give checks, which would also be a draw here. But if he goes too far, what's the obvious idea? You come back behind the pawn, and now, now we don't even need those checks anymore. We're going to be drawing next move by eliminating the pawn. Let's go back to the beginning position and see what we learned here. Um, so, again, we're not going to review 
do what the Lucina ideas were because um, we did that at the beginning of the video, and hopefully you remember that because it, I can't really stress enough, and it sounds basic now. I'm going to learn the basic position and then move backward, but you'd be surprised how often um, even very strong players will, will skip certain steps in their in their knowledge, in their in their foundation that they're trying to build, and, and that really affects their ability to solve something over the board or really affects their ability to know a more advanced position. So it sounds easy enough here, but that's just sort of a piece of advice for you when you're studying and when you're solving end games or doing these video courses. You know, you want to watch all of them. You want to start with what they recommend as the first video and move from there because I think that the ideas will help you to become a better player when, when they go in unison like that. Um, anyway, so knowing the Lucina idea, that tells us that we can't allow his king to come forward and force us out because we're going to lose. So that now we now we remember this idea of bringing our rook to the sixth ring um, to cut off the king, forcing his pawn to push first, upon which we'll immediately come back behind the pawn, um, exploiting to white, showing white that now his king no longer has a safe place, and uh, and the game will be an easy draw by coming over behind the checks. So real quick, we'll we'll end this uh, end this lecture on a good story to prove my point about not skipping steps. And somebody recommended, well, well can't, can't White at some point try, try to uh, bring the Rook down to maybe the third or fourth rank and try to trade Rooks here and try to win the King of Pawn ending? Well, uh, you always want to recognize any idea like that. It, I, I give him credit for seeing any ideas. But they should have known instantly that that game is a draw. And if you know that, kudos to you. If you don't know that, I'm going to explain that to you. King and Pawn end games, especially basic ones with one pawn, are always a draw when the pawn extends in front of the king. And the reason for that is that if you know the simplest drawing method, which is uh, keeping your king in front of the pawn, as long as you always went straight back from the pawn, which allows you to, to meet his king with opposition, whichever side he goes forward to. Um, if you went here, well then, you know, you're a dummy and you've just allowed him to win an easily drawn king of pawn end game. But as long as you know the basic way to draw a king upon ending, which is that you always come straight back from a pawn, then you should never even have to consider that rook trade. Now, they, of course, figured it out because they were 1,900 players, as I said, but the lecture I gave them was that they shouldn't have even have to figure that out. They should know that idea like the back of their hand because maybe maybe it, it's not relevant to them in a camp when they can all sit there and talk about it. But when you're in an over-the-board game with only five seconds left on your clock, you don't want to waste time on things that you should know. So that's an example of backwards to forwards chess. You, you should be starting with, you know, a really very masterful understanding of king and pawn endings. Then you can move on to more advanced end games because every step of the way, not only does it make you a king and pawn master if you want to brag, you know, whatever, but it also improves your ability to solve a much more difficult end game. So that's just a little um, little point there, and I'll show you one more time what I was talking about. Any sort of rook trade, even along the fifth ring. Let's say he got here. You know, and gave some checks and eventually tried to block along the fifth rank. The same same would be the case. Whenever the pawn has extended past the king, this should be an easy draw as long as you know to come straight back from the pawn, meeting him with opposition on either square, force draw. Okay. So we've got uh, more um, wonderful rook ending videos coming your way and uh, a bunch of uh, good information for, from a practical point of view as well as how to study and psychological things and Maybe I rambled too much about those, but I hope everyone enjoyed this first video. And we covered the Lucina Rook ending as well as the uh, Philidor drawing method. And hopefully I will see you in the next video and we will continue with more positions. Thank you, everyone.